Hey everyone, my name is Neil and welcome back to my garage and today we're going to start the build episodes for this new bread box I just built. So if you're interested, go ahead and stay tuned. Now full disclosure, I'd never heard of a bread box before my sister brought it to my attention, but once I learned what one was, I was more than excited to start this project. The first thing I did is I modeled this using a design software so that I can get a true visualization and make sure that I showed her so that we were on the same page. Now once we agreed on the design, the only thing left was for me to go to the hardware store so that we can begin building. Now that we're back from the hardware store, it's time to build. We picked up some poplar because that was cheap. That's it. End of story. And uh, times are tough right now, so I'm going to go ahead and flip and look for the best sides of the board and see which one I like. Once I have a side that I've identified to be the outside, I'm going to measure it. I'm going to mark it, and then I'm going to see exactly what it is we need to cut to. All right, as you see there, that piece isn't the best, so we're gonna make that the bottom, and then we're gonna move our way over to the miter saw, and we're gonna cut all the pieces that we need for the top, middle, and bottom, and then we're just gonna continue that. Here's a time lapse. Basically, it's the same thing. We're just cutting off the factory edge, and then we're gonna measure and cut the pieces that we need to cut. All right, make sure that you wear safety glasses and a mask as there's sawdust all over the place, and now we're gonna move back and put back on our tape so that I can label the pieces, make sure they're exactly how I want them to be because I don't want to get confused. Here's another shot of that so you could see. And then we're going to glue up. So I'm putting tape here so I don't get glue all over the parallel clamp because that's a pain to clean. We're just measuring using every piece that we have because I don't want to make a second trip. So I'm going to put on some wood glue here and then I'm going to put in clamps. As you notice, I don't have any dowels because this is perfectly strong without the use of dowels. The panels aren't that big and the wood glue is strong enough to hold and we're gonna slow it down right here and just make sure that you take your time. Here we're using pipe clamps because I don't have that many parallel clamps. Here as you can see, I'm removing as much excess glue as I can now with water so that I don't have to worry about sanding it down later. It's a lot easier to do it now. And here's a visual that you can see of all the panels in the clamps once they're glued up. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been 24 hours since we put these panels in the parallel clamps. Typically I like to wait till overnight and then I come back and I take them out of the clamps, but I've done it in as little as four hours or six hours of drying time. And I've never had a problem with a, a panel breaking. Let me know down in the comments how long you let to, you'd like to let your panel sit in a clamp and if I'm somewhere in the ballpark. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and take these out of the clamps. Let's do that. All right, so now we're gonna take these panels out of the clamps, take your time, and then we're gonna look at it, and it came out beautifully. I cannot complain. So now we're gonna go back to the miter saw, and we're gonna cut the pieces that we need for our sides, basically repeating the same process. Here we're gonna be using type on three like we were using before. So this is a good stopping point for part one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss the upload for part two. All right, let me know down in the comments what you guys thought. And as always, I'll see you the next time I decide to hit the upload button. Peace.